one thing I would point out as the sole woman on this panel, I also look at, I find it interesting to see when these terms woke cancel culture enter our consciousness and to me it seems cancel culture seemed to really enter the consciousness after the me too movement and i remember a lot of men especially sitting on their really worried that maybe they would be canceled too like harvey weinstein because now women we're speaking up, we're speaking out, and we're calling for accountability and we're calling for consequences. And I think ultimately, ultimately what people, what women in particular were calling for was for a reform of how we treat treat us and how we treat each other in this in this system. So I think to a certain extent, it's A, it goes back to my point, which is I was trying to make um, when when uh, cancel culture enters the lexicon, when woke enters the lexicon after, you know, the power and the force of, of black uh, voices, of black protests, now we're seeing, you know, CRT. I just look at the fear of cancel culture being this pervasive thing. Um, I, I, and I, I actually do think that men, people in power, um, cis people, I actually do think there is a discomfort. Is that toxic? Mm. I don't think so. I think it's uncomfortable and I can see that and I can acknowledge that. But what is more uncomfortable and more toxic? Women, black people, people of color who've been marginalized for a long time, who've had their careers destroyed by those who have used their power, who've used the systems to silence women, to use NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, to use lawsuits, to use threats, actual physical threats of violence against those who do not have the power of the system to work for them. So I, you know, I, I look at this and I, I'm kind of like the whole thing is sort of disingenuous because it's just really interesting who the groups that perpetuate, you know, woke is being pejorative, cancel culture is being pejorative.